Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. Aside from Zoom, we are also streaming live from Facebook. So hello to everyone who joined us. Our topic for today is building and maintaining resilience in a pandemic. My name is Alu Urbano and I will be your moderator for this session. Let me just remind you that this session will be recorded. Before, our uh, before we start our fun and learning, let's have a quick check-in. Could you please say hi and shout out what organization you are from using the chat box? Just click on the chat button below your screen and please make sure that we send it to everyone and not just the panelists. Okay, let's see who's with us. Hey, we have uh, people from PUP Manila, we have from San Fernando, we have from Apu University, we have from SLU Baguio, hello. We have people from Cebu, LCP. We have people from Kalaokan, Deb Ed Makari. Okay. We have a lot of people from SLU, CEU. Okay, I can't mention everyone, but welcome. And it looks like we have a good turnout. Before we proceed, with, well, let me just introduce my company. Okay, so who are we? Uh, Trend Micro is a cybersecurity company that's been around for more than 30 years, leading the market with continuous innovation in virtualization, cloud, artificial intelligence, and IoT. Trend Micro has customers across the top Fortune 500 companies, including eight of the top 10 global Fortune 500. We are made of more than 6,700 trenders who are passionate about making the world a safer and better place for everyone. And now for some reminders for our webinar. Here are the tools that you could use to communicate with us. You'll see both the chat and the Q&A buttons at the bottom of your screen. Please use the chat section if you need to send us any feedback during the webinar. The Q&A section is where you can send in your questions. You can post them anytime throughout the webinar, but in order to manage your limited time, they will be answered at the end. Basic questions will be answered via chat and the others will be answered live during the Q&A. So the raise hand option will not be needed. Kindly include the slide number in your question so we can reply to them faster. Also use the upvote feature of Zoom. If you have the same question, just click on the like button. The, uh, the questions with the most number of likes will be prioritized during the Q&A portion. You may also add more details to the question by using the comment button. A polling question will be posted from time to time, so please watch out for it. A separate window will pop up to show you the poll. Just select your answer from the list and click submit. The results of the poll will be shown after. Just click close when you're done viewing the results. At the end of the webinar, you will be automatically routed to a survey form. Kindly, kindly take time to answer this short survey. Your feedback is valuable to us and will help improve our succeeding webinar. Those who answer the survey will receive a certificate of attendance for this webinar via email one week after this presentation. Access to the recording of this session, key takeaways, and succeeding webinar schedules will be announced in our Facebook pages. So these are the Facebook pages at uh, Trend Micro Careers Philippines and click right PH. You can also send us a message if you want to request a topic you would want us to cover in our next webinar. So please like and follow our pages. Just a friendly reminder, all materials and presentations are owned by Trend Micro Incorporated and are subject to copyright. It's time for you to meet our speaker. Our speaker is Bobby Claudio. Bobby is the newest member of the Global Technical Support Training and Development as a professional skills trainer. He has over 19 years of training experience and having started way back in 2001. He joined Trend Micro in March 2020. His training experience ranges, uh, ranges from facilitating soft skills training, technical training, leadership and development training, and public speaking, to name a few. Aside from his BPO experience, Bobby has worked for one of the top training consultancy firms in the country and is a certified training consultant. He also works as a leadership and development manager for uh, the country's leading pharmaceutical retail company. His vast background will allow him to develop and facilitate modules that 
trenders in improving their skills and better handle customer concerns while enhancing the entire customer experience. Just a bit of a trivia, uh, Bobby has a wide range of interests. He's a gamer, he loves music, toy collecting, and is a car enthusiast. He, often, he is often called a big kid due to, the, to his hobbies. He also did a stint in both the music and voiceover industry. Hi, Bobby. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Alu, for that wonderful introduction. And uh, I was looking at the, okay. the chat window and there are a lot, it's a good turnout. There are a lot of people from not just the Philippines, but people from different parts of the world. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so uh, let me just uh, share my presentation. Okay. There you go. So by the way, uh, folks, for those who are joining us today, um, I really enjoy this, uh, these tandems that Alu and I have. Uh, uh, when she runs webinars, I host for her, for her and then when I run <laughs> webinars, she hosts for me. <laughs> okay. yeah. so, uh, so again, thank you for joining us and uh, welcome to Building and Maintaining Resilience in a Pandemic webinar. So for those who attended uh, my first webinar, this is the uh, part two. The, the first webinar was Embracing Positivity and Maintaining Emotional Well-Being During a Pandemic. If you weren't able to catch that, you can watch it in the Facebook page. Now, um, to show that we are live, let me just switch on my camera really quick. But for bandwidth purposes, I'll have to shut it off. Okay, so hi everyone. See, as you can see, we're coming in live. And then I'm now going to shut that off so that we have better bandwidth. Okay, so before we continue, I'd like to uh, remind everybody or uh, just to mention to everyone that I'm not a psychiatrist nor a psychologist and I'm, I'm not a doctor either. Everything that you will be learning in this webinar are from experience and of course uh, they are not a 100% guarantee it will work for you. Of course there are a lot of factors that have to come into place and uh, uh, with that being said let's uh, let's start. So first of all what is resilience? According to Jean Sherman Chatsky, who is an American journalist and a personal, personal finance columnist in the United States, she says that resilience isn't a single skill. It's a variety of skills and coping mechanisms to bounce back from bumps in the road as well as failures. You should focus on emph emphasizing the positive. So sa madaling salita, okay, you, you don't just have one way of uh, being resilient. You use different types of skills. It's also a coping mechanism. If we're going to go into details about the word itself, it is derived from the Latin verb salire, which means to jump, and the prefix re, which means back or again. Thus, resilience is literally about jumping back. Okay, so we've heard the statement a lot of times na pagka nadapa, bumangon. When you, when you fall down, get up. Resilience is different. It's not just getting up. Try to imagine, na pag nadapa ka, of course, you will feel pain, you need to recover, and you slowly get up. And sometimes you even need help to get up. Resilience is different. Not only are you not just going to slowly get up, but you're expected to jump back up. So how is that possible? Kung maalala nyo yung mga uh, movies ni Bruce Lee for the older generation, and uh, for the younger generation, uh, Jackie Chan is, is the one who's, who's left among the Kung Fu greats. Uh, there's a move called the Kip Up, or also known as the Kick Up. So what happens is when the opponent tries to kick the person in the face or in the chest, that person falls down, or even if he, he or she does get kicked, he or she falls down, and then just with an instant springs back up. So resilience is something like that. You don't just uh, slowly get up, but you jump back up. So what does that mean? That means you have to build it or you have to learn how to strengthen yourself to be able to jump back up. Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So it is developing social, academic, and vocational competence even if exposed to extreme stress. Mamaya, pag-uusapan natin yung stress. We're going to talk about uh, how to deal with it and uh, the realities of stress because a lot of people believe, still believe that stress is just in the mind. Well, yes and no, and we'll talk about that later. 
Now, resilience is not always present and resiliency levels may change depending on the situation. Siyempre, it depends on the maturity of the person. It depends also on, on, on culture. It can also depend on the culture of, of, uh, of the person, whether it, it also depends on the values of the person, and it also depends on the situation. So if you notice uh, the, the problems that we had when we were children and the problems that we have now that we are adults are very, very different. And of course, our resiliency levels change as we get older. Um, however, it doesn't mean that our challenges will stop. Okay? As long as we're living and breathing, our challenges will continue to be around. And especially during this pandemic, this uh, topic is very timely because, as I mentioned, it's a follow-up to the first webinar that I had, uh, which is being positive. This is not how to maintain that positivity by building the resilience. Okay, so let's look at the levels of resilience building. Okay, first of all, it starts with mental health. Okay, mental health is essential to sustaining your mental health, your physical health, and your energy, of course, physical and mental energy. Now, what do we mean by mental health? A lot of people believe that uh, there are times that if you feel down and there are times that you uh, feel, uh, you know, that, that, that you're having a difficulty with, with uh, coping with situations, it's all in the mind. Yes, that's true. It, yes and no. But uh, here's the scientific part about, about mental health. So in, in terms of stress, uh, stress produces, when, you're, when your mind is, at, is, is in distress, your body produces cortisol. Cortisol is a uh, hormone that is responsible for our flight and fight uh, reaction. What does that mean by flight and fight? So if, for example, there's a lion in front of you, um, cortisol is what warns the body, the, the levels to be able to run away if you choose to do so, or to fight for survival. Now, when the body is stressed, and, uh, or the mind rather is stressed, the body follows because the, those hormones, if they're there too much and they're, they're too high, it affects everything else. So it all starts with the mind, okay? Uh, your mental health. Now, the physiological part of this is your brain should be treated like an organ, okay? It's not just, it shouldn't be taken for granted because it is the central processing unit of your entire body. So mental health is very, very important. Okay, later on, we will expound more on, on stress. But take note again, that cortisol is something that's very damaging to the body when the mind is stressed and the body will, of course, suffer. The second and the third related to what I, what I discussed before, if, for those who have, who have attended it, this is what we call the circle of influence. But for those who are attending this for the first time, let me explain it. It's very simple. The outer world and the inner world. So the outer world are things around you that you cannot control. So the pandemic, you cannot control. Finding the vaccine, you cannot control. People around you who do not follow the Department of Health regulations and the World uh, Health Organization regulations, you cannot control. So why stress over these things? The inner world is what you can control. How you feel, how you think, how you react, how you deal with certain challenges. Yan yung pwede nyo i-control. Ngayon, when... People, pag tayo, we try to control what cannot be controlled. That affects our mental health. Because there are some of us, I, I'm, I myself sometimes can be a, uh, very particular with this. And I have to remind myself that there are things that really are beyond my control. So by accepting this reality early on, it will improve in building our resilience. Na may mga bagay talaga na hindi mo pwedeng control. But what you can control is your inner world. Everything that revolves around your world is something within your control, but everything revolves around your world are things that you cannot. Number four is training, bu building, and developing good thinking habits. Okay, so good thinking habits, siempre positive thinking, that's one of it. And we'll, we'll, we'll expound on that later on. Now, by uh, um, focusing on your mindset for developing resiliency, uh, that's how you train yourself, right? So, ano yung mindset na dapat na kaya ko to, um, I'm able to deal with these situations, so on and so forth. So the training part is what we're doing right now. The building and the building rather and developing part is something that you'll have to do on your own. Hopefully after this, you, you will learn and you'll be able to do this. And the good thinking habits we will discuss later as mentioned. 
Then, of course, real-time application. For everything that we've learned, what that we learn, whether it's in this particular webinar or not, it will be useless if we do not apply it. Now, a lot of people say, madaling sabihin, mahirap gawin. Totoo naman. There are a lot of things that are difficult to apply. And it's true that sometimes the preacher is not the one who practices what he preaches. But that doesn't give an excuse for you not to try. Um, yours truly, and just like everybody around the world, is going through diff or is handling this pandemic differently. Some of us are okay, some of us are not, some of us are coping, some most of us are not. Or some, but then it, it varies on a day to day basis. There are some cultures that are very resilient to what's happening around them, so on and so forth. So uh, it really depends on the person, and it only depends on how. Uh, or what you do with the information that you get. So, kailangan talaga natin i-apply. Now, the beauty about resilience is when it does happen that you experience these challenges, um, you just keep on applying what, what, what you've learned and you keep on building on your resilience. Parang you're building resistance to these challenges. Think of it as drinking vitamins so that you won't uh, easily get sick. So, that's building your immune system here we're building resilience. Now, speaking of which, now in terms of your mind, your mind and thinking can create barriers or bridges. Yan. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? The most powerful word is choice. Di ba? You have to choose what to do, how to think, how to react to certain things. So, kung isipin mo talaga na hindi mo kaya, so barrier na yon. Pero kung isipin mo na kaya ko to, kakayanin ko to, I'll be able to achieve this, I'll be able to survive this pandemic. There are so many things I should be grateful for. There are so many things that uh, I, I can achieve, so on and so forth. Then you build a bridge. Now, the struggle to recover from challenges lead to developing strengths and abilities you didn't know you had in you. Now, just to share, last year, until the first quarter of this year, were a series of uh, very challenging events in my life from the uh, hospitalization of my mom which happened last year because she was diagnosed with breast cancer. But thank God she's uh, cancer-free. And the moment we got home from the hospital, a day after that, I was sent to the hospital because of uh, extreme varicosity in my legs because the doctors were afraid that my varicose veins could cause a block which could lead to either head trauma or a seizure or a heart attack. Then after my hospitalization, a week after that, my son was hospitalized. Then a few months after that, my father had a stroke. So, sunod-sunod talaga siya. Sunod-sunod. And surprisingly, with God's grace and also with the, my family around me, my friends around me, and practicing my best to follow what I preach, I was surprised with the strengths and abilities that I didn't know that I had in myself. I'm pretty sure the people who are listening right now have gone through similar or even more challenging situations. And the fact that you're living, you're breathing, you're attending this particular webinar, you're still around, means that you are stronger, you are wiser, and you are able to um, develop that resiliency and you're ready to face whatever challenges come your way. Okay. So uh, before we continue, let's have a quick poll assessment. So the, the question is, in our current situation, would being resilient help you? So Alu is now flashing the poll. All you guys have to do is just to click yes, no, and not sure. You have 20 seconds to do this. And while everybody else is answering, Alu, how would you respond to this? Yes, it would definitely help me, especially right. with what's going on right now. A lot I of agree. Uh, negativity yes okay so um in a few seconds we will see all right so 95 percent says yes and five percent says not sure okay thank you so much for sharing that why did i ask this question the not sure is something that is a reality we also have to face the good thing about the yes is um you're already in your first few steps to building your resilience because you've recognized the fact that this is going to be helpful. You're not sure. It's, it's good that, I, I, that, that this came out because to those who answered not sure, you have to remove that from your heads. You have to remove that from your mind because that is the, the, the beginning of the barrier. Okay. For example, if you have to take a certain type of medicine 
and you doubt that it's going to help you, because of the power of the mind and the power of the brain, sa sobrang lakas niyan, even if you are taking that medicine, your body will contradict it. Kaya dapat hindi not sure. You have to make that, I would suggest that you make that choice na kakayanin ko to. This will be um, helpful in this current situation. Because what else do we have now that we are experiencing the pandemic? Okay? Um, and the reality is we don't know what's going to happen. And if, imagine if you're going to live your life negatively in this particular situation right now. And not only that, um, you don't build your resilience. Because it's not enough that you are positive. You have to make sure that when life kicks you down, you have enough strength to get back up and not just get back up, to jump back up. So for those who answered yes, good, because you are on your first step or first few steps to building your resilience. And you may, may already be resilient and you don't know it yet. And for those who are not sure, again, I would recommend that that's the first barrier that you have to destroy, that, that type of mentality na, uh, and uh, uncertainty. Remember, this is something that will be very helpful for us, especially in this pandemic. Now, in building resilience, we have the seven C's. What are the seven C's? So we have competence, confidence, connection, character, contribution, coping, and control. Competence. You have to be competent in building your resilience. You have to know what to do. If you don't know what to do, you have to ask. If you have no one to ask, you have to research. You have to know yourself. You have to explore um, your, yourself and reflect on yourself. Yan yung competence. Confidence, you have to believe na kaya mo. You have to believe that it is possible. For all the parents out there, uh, when you decided to become mothers and fathers, there, there was no... Uh, instruction manual that came with the, with the child, hindi ba? Wala. Oh, pero anong sinabi mo sa sarili mo? Kakayanin ko to. And because of love for our children, ba? all the sacrifices that we make for them, nakayanin mo yung confidence na yan. Confidence is inert. It is natural to every person. The only thing that does not bring out that confidence, going back to what I said earlier, is choice because you choose not to be confident. Nandyan yan. It was given to us. It is a gift. So everyone has that opportunity to be confident. Okay, Connection. Yeah, and very important that we discuss that. Your network. Please be reminded that resiliency doesn't mean that you have to do things alone. Kasi kung ang purpose ni natin is to be alone, hindi dapat di tayo nag-uusap ngayon. There's only one person in the world. The purpose God created all of us is for us to help one another. So, connection po yan. Use your network. Okay? And another thing also, it is pride that will be your biggest barrier in building your resilience. Because a lot of people say na pags resilient, they'll do it alone. Hindi. If you look at um, great people in history, there's always someone supporting them at some point. Hindi pwedeng mag lang. Hindi ba? You look at boxers. No matter how athletic they are, how great they punch, they're nothing without a coach. Hindi ba? May connection yan to, to push them, to inspire them. For all the teachers that, that are listening, you are that connection to that student. That student and all the trainers who are listening also, those participants, when they perform, when they excel, it is because of their connection to you. That's why it's very vital that what you teach them, the, the, the example that you portray to these participants, these, these students should be a good example because you are role models and they will get their strength and their knowledge from you. And they will cherish that connection because they will pass that importance of reaching out to other people and helping other people as they mature in life. Character, of course. By building resilience, you, it develops your character. Sabi nga nila, what does not kill you makes you stronger. I remember my mom uh, mentioned to me na Ang tao parang marble, no ba? Tapos life is the is the chisel, the hammer, and then our Lord is the 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 sculptor, no ba? Yung mga challenges natin, no ba? So imagine you're made of marble. Tapos siya na sculpt ka. And remember from history, sila Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, when they sculpt these sculptures from marble, which is the hardest rock, ang la life like na mga sculpture. So that through these experiences through these challenges by building your character at the end masterpiece ka. So I'll never forget that advice that was, that was given to me and I'm passing it on to you. 
contribution. Kailangan may gagawin ka rin. You cannot be resilient without contributing. I remember the, the, there was this joke about uh, uh, that was told to me about this lady who is looking for Mr. Right. But she doesn't meet people. So how are you going to meet Mr. Right? Kailangan may gagawin ka rin. Diba? Sana makilala ko na si Mr. Right. Well, how's that going to happen? Bubukas ang pinto, nandiyan na siya. It doesn't work that way. Diba? If you want to achieve something, you have to contribute. You have to do your part. Coping, of course, when we experience certain challenges, meron tayong tinatawag na coping period. That's normal. What's abnormal is if you don't leave that stage in your life. So you're just coping forever. I know of someone who has uh, experienced a, a very uh, traumatic marriage. Okay? And uh, sad to say, it ended in separation. Now, the partner is already happy with, with, uh, with someone else and is trying his best to be a good father while the one who was left behind is still in the coping stage after how many years? And that's not healthy for that person. And I'm sure for the people listening, you do have friends or relatives who are like that, that they keep on telling you the same story and you keep on giving the same advice, dilikadian, because they can't seem to get out of the coping stage. Now, what will help you or help these people get out of the coping stage? Choice. Okay na ako, tama na. That's it. No, I... I I've went to this stage. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, then you plan your, your life, right? So coping is part of it, but please do not stay in that stage too long. Lastly is control. Control of what? Control of emotions. To feel emotions is normal. It is what makes us human. But to be ruled by our emotions, and yours truly is, you know, uh, I do have my struggles with this, but to be ruled by your emotions, it will uh, weaken your resiliency building kasi magiging emotional ka, it's either you become sad or you get angry, you can't think straight. So nasisira yung momentum mo in building your resilience. So these are the seven C's. Now, another thing that we should remember also is to count our blessings. Okay? What we have here is the I have, I can, and I am. So we have to remind ourselves of the things that we have. And we have a lot in spite of the pandemic. Okay? By the way, before I continue and discuss this, Uh, there are a lot of people who are focusing so much of what they cannot do. Hindi na ako makalabas, hindi na ako nakakapag-sports, I don't get to see my friends, so on and so forth. That's a very unhealthy way of, uh, of thinking, especially during these times. So when life really becomes a challenge for us, the I have, I can, I am formula it will be very helpful. So what is the I have part of the I have, I can, I am formula? I have family, friends, colleagues. Managers and leaders who are here to help me, okay? The resources to help me when I need it, a company who I can depend on, and who takes care of its employees. Diba? So you have a lot of things to be grateful for. By the way, this I have, I can, I am formula can be personalized. You can add more stuff to the I have. You can go ahead and do that, okay? Because there, again, if you, I, I learned from a very wise man, uh, a, a good friend of mine from my previous company, that if you count your blessings compared to the things that you don't have, mas marami ka pa rin blessings if you really know where to look and know how to count. So you can add to that. You can, you can personalize it. If, if you believe in a higher power, you can put it there as well, that, that there is someone greater than you watching over you and taking care of you. You just have to trust. I can do this. I can build my resilience to stress and I can develop resilience. So you know yung part that you make the decision. Remember, choice is a very... Um, very important and powerful word. And related to choice is a permanent word called change. So if you put the two together, you can choose to change your life. You can choose to change how you think. You can choose to better yourself and you can choose to build that resilience. Kaya if you think about it, yung mga sinasabi na wala kong choice, you chose to say wala kang choice. Choice pa rin yun. Ganun ka powerful ang choice. No? And lastly, I am going to change how I view people, uh, how I view challenges in life, and I am going to be resilient. So take note of this and remember this. You can personalize the I have portion. So when you're feeling down and you want to count your blessings, always remember na andami mong blessings. No matter how bad it gets, remember there is still hope. Reach out to your network before you get this depressed or before you feel this, this despair, reach out to your network. Remember, 
one of the key, key takeaways also from building resilience is humility. No? Going back to yung connection, huwag mong iisipin na kakayanin mong lahat because uh, it doesn't work that way. We were created to help one another. So use that network and reach out to people who can help you. Now, Food for thought, we can't control all that happens to us. We can control what, what, what we can control rather is how and uh, what, what, what we feel and what we think and how we react. So that is a universal truth. So again, inner world, outer world, if you look at this particular slide, yan. Okay, I cannot control if others follow the rules of social distancing. Okay, recently I went to uh, SM with my, with my folks and most of the people there, because we had to go out, no, there we do, we rarely do. But if we really need to go out, we go up, okay. And uh, we needed to do stuff in the grocery, and we had some errands. And we, I noticed that a lot of people were following social distancing, were wearing face masks and face shields. Pero meron din mga pasaway. There were some people that they believe na porket na ha face mask at saka face shield, pwede na silang lumapit. So. What do you do? You can't, if you tell them to step away, you might risk insulting these people. And they might, you know, become very defensive. They might, anything can happen. So to not waste time, you focus on what you can control, which is yourself. If they don't follow social distancing, the actions of others, predicting what will happen, yan, beyond our control. Other people's motives. Uh, the amount of toilet paper at the store. Okay, so uh, this is mo this is more relevant to people outside the Philippines because um, for some reason people started hoarding toilet paper. But in our country, uh, it's not just all toilet paper. If you notice, uh, as soon as there's there's news about a lockdown, people are starting to hoard. So what do you do? What can you control? Plan ahead. Pag may na balita ka na and everything, you know, manage and budget. Uh, the things that you have and plan ahead. You can't tell them, oh, you won't go in lahat yan, kawawa naman ang iba. Because even if you say that, they'll, it doesn't change their behavior. They may decide to put some of the toilet paper, quote unquote, back, or they may just continue to get. So, what do you do? You have to um, control what you can. Okay. How long this pandemic will last? Well, I think control then. How others will react? Yeah, I'm very important. No? You can, after this webinar, siempre, you can share this with your friends and your family. But some of them we might still be skeptical, might be pessimists. Well, that's their choice. And you can't control that. Remember, especially to the teachers and the educators and the leaders and managers who are, who are listening, you can't um, force people to follow you. You can't force people to learn from you. You can only influence if they want to be influenced. Because free will, yan, choice. Nila yan. So do not overstress yourself. Kung ayaw makinig sayo, as long as you did your part, and you did everything within your power, then focus on what you can do, which is the things that you can control. Your positive attitude, maintaining that, how you follow the UH recommendations, your own social distancing, turning off the news. Kung nasa stress ka sa news, huwag niyong panoorin. Hindi ba? Yung limiting your social media, kung puro negative sa social media, it's, it's very easy. Unfollow or switch it off. If you don't want to unfriend the person, then switch it off. Your kindness and grace and to other people and to yourself and finding fun things to do at home. You'll be surprised that have a lot of things that you can do with your family. Take this time to spend more time with your family. I guess one of the things that we have to learn from this pandemic is to slow down a bit because when we were back in our back before this happened in our normal lives, things were going very fast. So Yon, so focusing on this on what we see here, focus on the things that you can control and let go of the other things that you cannot. Okay, now let's talk about uh, how to develop good thinking habits. Now, in order to do that, let's look at poor thinking habits first. No? So, pag-uusapan natin yung mga wag gagawin. Okay, and the good is to avoid these things. So, yung all or nothing mentality. All or nothing mentality. So, for those who have water in front of you, a glass of water, a cup of coffee, if you look at that bottle or glass or cup of coffee or whatever beverage you have, um, how you look at the glass, at the container, and its contents will, will uh, dictate the type of mentality that you have. Some people look at the bottle of water as half empty. Yung iba see it as half full. Pag sinabing half empty, more often than not, yun yung mga all or nothing people. Kasi 
ayon niyang inumin kasi kalahating ubos. Na ba? Ay, hindi siya puno. Huwag na lang. It's either puno siya or wag na lang. But the more positive people, if they see na kalahating puno, uy, meron pa. Sayang. Sige, inumin ko na. It's the same with anything else. So, avoid the all or nothing mentality. Jumping to conclusions, judging, and assuming. Yan. Uh, this is also something that will hinder your resilience. Kasi, uh, more often than not, ang mga worry, worriers, ganyan, mag-isip. No? Na, uy, pagka ganito, ganito ka agad mangyayari. No? I-assume ko that will happen. Diba? So, you remember, be careful. Take, take necessary steps when you go out. But don't necessarily live in too much fear because you won't be able to move around. Making a mountain out of a molehill. Maliit na bagay. Pinalalaki. Yan. Ako, that's uh, something that's very unhealthy. Especially now. A lot of people are experiencing that because their cortisol levels are very high. Why? Because uh, we are restricted at home. Meron tayong tinatawag na cabin fever. Cabin fever, uh, for those who are not too familiar with the expression, originated in cold countries because when snow happens to be very thick, yung mga cabins in the woods, pag punong-puno ng snow sa labas, hindi makalabas ng, ng cabin and they're stuck inside. So, hindi ka makalabas, labas na labas ka na, diba? parang yun yung cabin fever na inexplain. So, because of cabin fever, the added stress levels, so maliit na bagay, pinalalaki. So, that, that, that also will hinder your resilience and your way of thinking. Reasoning using emotions, that is a contradic- contradictory statement. You cannot... Uh, think if you are emotionally or if you're emotional or emotionally involved. No? So it's either you feel your emotions first and then when you're calm, that's when you can think. Okay, next. Should, could, would statement. Sana pala kung alam ko lang na pandemia ang 2020, ginawa ko na to, ginawa ko na yan. E tapos na eh. Wala ka na magagawa for now. So what do you do? Plan. When this is over, do what you can. Or if there are things that are left undone or unfinished, if you can't do it from home, Go ahead. Hindi ba? So, wag na yung shoe could, would. Sana, do not live your life in the past. No? That's, that's another poor thinking habit that can affect your resilience. Taking things personally. Yan. Ako, I myself also sometimes struggle with this. I'm sure with everybody else who's listening. Hindi ba? Naglalakad ka sa daan. Tapos, nabangga ka. Di ba? Uh, hindi nag-sorry. So, kakabulin mo. Oy, mag-sorry ka. Well, you don't know how that person is going to react. You don't know what the person is going through. If you did not get physically harmed, if nothing fell or anything, you can choose just to, okay, maybe he's going through something. I'll just I'll let him be. Hindi ba? Pina personal lahat. Um, text messages that are misinterpreted, uh, emails or letters, or the tone of voice of the other person. O ba? Baka galit na to. Or uh, may, and, uh, what does he mean by that? So taking things too personal is also a very unhealthy Wishful thinking, nangangarap na wala namang ginagawa. Na ba? So it's related to the should, could, the would statement. So aside from just thinking and the wishing, excuse me, uh, do something about it. Try to achieve whatever goal uh, you can. Okay? Filtering feedback, very important. So it's good to know your strengths, but it's better to know your weaknesses. Kasi yung strengths mo, alam mo na eh, all you have to do is just to maintain or um, improve on whatever you have. But to know your weaknesses is very, very important. It's like putting, it's like someone putting money in your bank account. Kasi more often than not, we don't see our own weaknesses. We don't know what we have to improve on. So by knowing these things, you become a better person. Ang problema, filtering feedback. Pag nakarinig ng bagay na ayaw, filter. Oh, there are some people who are like that. They, they, they'd rather hear all positive things. And the moment they hear na you should have done better here, you should have done ayaw na. So, why limit yourself? No, you know your strengths. It will be an edge to know your weaknesses. So don't filter feedback. And again, forgetting the positive. Okay, look around you right now. You're surrounded by family who love you. There are so many things that you have. Don't take them for granted. The fact that you're attending this, that means you have, you have a connection. It may not be a good internet connection, but still, there are some people who don't. If you're watching through a cell phone, buti may cell phone ka kasi merong iba wala. If you're using a computer, even if it's company owned, you at least you have a computer. No, you don't don't uh, discount the positive. There's always something positive. 
Uh, you have water to drink, you have food to eat, you have a roof above your heads, you have a bed to sleep in. There are so many things to be um, positive about. Okay, now what happens, for example, when you start experiencing the challenges at medyo naging negative na yung experiences mo. So during building resilience or in the building of your resilience, you, there is what we call intervention and prevention. So it's very easy. All you have to remember is case, C-A-S-E, case. So catch yourself when you're thinking negatively. Avoid the domino effect of negative thoughts. Substitute with positive thoughts only and examine the challenge objectively. Mahirap yung domino effect. Okay, so let me give a very simple example. So nag-text ka, <clears throat> excuse me, nag-text ka, hindi sumagot. Hi, naku, uh, ano kaya nangyari? Galit siguro sa akin to. Uh, siguro dahil sa sinabi ko kahapon, ako, nagtatampo to. Ako, anong gagawin ko ngayon? Pwes, kung magtatampo siya at itatapon lang niya yung, yung friendship namin for how many years, ganyan na siya, adi ah, friend ko na lang. Domino effect. Na puro negative thoughts. As compared to, oh, hindi pa nag-reply. Baka busy. Baka tulog pa. Baka low bat yung cellphone. Sige, I'll just text later. Hindi ba? And then you'll be surprised. I'm oh, sorry, medyo late yung reply. Yung 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 yung. So it's not healthy. So case, catch yourself when you're thinking negatively. Avoid uh, the domino effect of negative thoughts. Substitute with positive thoughts only and examine the challenge objectively. Now, um, resiliency is natural. Just like confidence, it's in nature. Not only in us humans, but around us. And here's proof. Ayan. This picture was taken at the side of a mountain. Gilid ng bundok. Gilid ng mundok may plant life. At yung plant life may bulaklak. How did this plant get water? How did it get nutrients? How did it even get there? And it's surviving in spite of its surroundings. Resilient siya. Matibay siya. It's found in nature. Ito naman, this tree is on top of the mountain. Baluktot na siya. Tabingi na siya. Because of the strong winds, the current of winds it's experiencing. Where do the roots go? How does it get water? How did it get there? Who planted it? Was it planted naturally? Nobody knows. It's a mystery. But it's there. It's living. It's a breathing. Remember, uh, plants, flowers, all of these things are living and breathing things. Diba? So buhay siya. But the thing that takes the, the cake or the champion out of all of these examples is this particular tree. O, di ba? Check it out. The middle part, whether it was done naturally or man-made, wala nang lupa dyan. But yet, it stretched out its roots. It's firmly grasped to the side. And it even, if you look at this particular part, if you can see my cursor, the roots are pointing downward. It's looking for water. So in time, bababa lahat ng mga ugat na yan, and it will form a stronger foundation. Does the tree look unhealthy? No. Is this Photoshop? No. I, I, I did some research and according to the net, it's an actual picture uh, based on what I saw. And I wouldn't be surprised that if this tree continues because this tree wants to be resilient. So again, resiliency, it's in nature. It's something that can be achieved naturally. And if that can be achieved naturally, what more if you set your mind into building that resiliency? Now, pag-usapan natin ang stress. So what does it say about stress? Okay, let's get to this part. Stress is the perception that the problem or challenge is greater than the resources you have for coping and dealing with it. And stress is the biggest cause of both mental and physical health problems. So, yan. There are two types of stress. You have you stress and this stress. You stress is positive stress. This stress is the negative stress that we know about. How can there be positive stress? Think about it. Nanalo ka sa loto. Masaya ka. You have extreme emotions of happiness. Your heart rate is up. Your blood pressure is up. It is stress on the body, pero positive siya. May endorphins, no? May uh, good hormones, happy hormones. E nawala mo yung ticket. Ayan na yung distress. Your, your heart rate is also up. Your BP is also up. But instead of extreme happiness, you have extreme sadness and frustration. So there are two types of stress. May good saka may bad. So it's, it's there. It's a, it's a reality. So we need to deal with this type of stress. Now, we're not going to focus on the good type of stress because 
uh, we, what we need to do, because yung good type of stress, madali lang yan eh. No? It, it, and we, we would love to get that no, from time to time. By addressing the, the bad part of stress, it will be easier to uh, have good or better quote-unquote stress uh, or the use stress in our lives na masaya tayo. Diba? Sige. So let's look at the things that we can do to build resilience dealing in, with dealing with stress. So again, think positively. Express your thoughts to release. Talk to people. There is what you call talk therapy. Talk to people that you trust, that you love, that can keep confidential information and release to them. Practice the attitude of gratitude. Instead of complaining about the things you don't have, please look at all the blessings that you do have. Be mindful of your blessings as related to the first the, the bullet point before that. Focus on your strengths. Remember your goals. Do acts of kindness. Don't give up easily under pressure. And of course, work on your weaknesses. And in dealing with stress, it's as easy as falala. No? So, pagka nasa-stress ka, sabihin nyo ng out loud, falala. Ganon, naba? Release that. So, if you can say it together with me, even if I can't hear you, falala. What is falala? Find meaning in life. Ask for help. Again, in humidity is very important in building resilience. Pag hindi mo kaya, ask for help. And don't even get to the point na hindi mo na kaya. Laugh at yourself because life is short. Hindi ba? No one is perfect. Always remain hopeful. Learn from your experiences and accept and anticipate change. So yan ang falala. Ano ang benefits naman natin? No? It improves mental health, reduces the stress levels, of course. It renews your spirit, refines your skills, clears your thoughts. May balance and flexibility ka sa bahay. Tsaka sa trabaho. Kasi you're, you're, you learn how to balance both things. And may balance and flexibility ka sa buhay as well. So not only sa bahay, but also sa trabaho, but also sa buhay. Prevents burnout. When your cortisol levels are very high and you can't think straight, you get emotional, uh, there are times na nakatulala ka, that's already burnout. It's a psychological and physiological effect on the body. Okay? So if you're able to build your resilience, it prevents your burnout. Okay? Provide strategies for dealing with difficult situations because you're able to think clearer. Improve self-confidence and self-esteem. Kaya ko to. Nadaanan ko na to. No? I'll be able to face this challenge and the challenge head on. And of course, it's also beneficial for the companies that you work for because you, be you, be you become effective and efficient employees. All right. So let's now move on <clears throat> Excuse me, to our next poll question. Do you think you are resilient? Ayan. So Alu, could you kindly... Uh, Flash, oh, there you go. So it's yes, no, not sure sometimes. You have 20 seconds to answer this. Um, while you're answering that, Alu, what would be your answer here? For me, sometimes. Because sometimes, sometimes I need help. <laughs> right, very good. Okay, so uh, just a few more seconds and then we'll be able to see the results. Okay, could we see the results? Yan, yes, konti yung no, merong not sure. At meron yung sometimes. Okay, very good. Now, why did I ask this question? Yung yes, again, that's a good step because you're believing in yourself. Yung not sure is the humility that you have to remember, that you have to in, uh, have in yourself to be able to build the resiliency. Kasi nga, naba sabi nga ni Alu, and I do agree, sometimes you need help. So sometimes you are resilient. Sometimes you are not, and when you are not, and it's time to ask for help, go back to the seven C's, your connection, your network, you ask for help. Now, for those who are not sure and know, okay, uh, these are the things that are expected of resilient people. So, yan. so una una, based on what Alu mentioned earlier, okay, they know how to ask for help. Wag mong sosolohin, especially in this time of the pandemic. If you need help, okay, from friends and family, and even from professionals, from if there are people you can talk to for counseling, go ahead. Show empathy for the needs of others. Have love and compassion in their lives. Yan. Kasi it's not just all, all, all about you. It's about other people as well. You know your strengths and your weaknesses. So you, you focus on your strengths and you improve your weaknesses. And the best part is you can use even your strengths to address your weaknesses. Kung magawa mo yun, that's quite an accomplishment. You have courage. Remember guys, courage is... Even if you're afraid, doing what you need to do. Yan. So, kaya sa mga nag-grocery dyan, lumalabas para mag-grocery, yan. Yung mga tributes for the day, mga unsung heroes sa mga yan. No? I'm sure kinakabahan kayo. I, the, myself, I am also a little bit afraid. But this is something I have to do for my family. So, courage is doing 
something that you need to do even if you're afraid. To all the frontliners out there, by the way, frontliners are not limited just to doctors and to people in the military, nurses, so on and so forth. The people who work in uh, pharmaceutical companies for sales, the people who are uh, uh, currently going to work because they're reporting to work can be considered frontliners and people in IT who make sure that we can work from home. All of these people, and thank you for your service. These are the people who are very courageous, the new heroes, okay? Can move forward. Yeah, and very important. No, it does not stay in the um, coping stage. <clears throat> Looks for opportunities and problems. Has a positive attitude. Fights the victim mentality. Yan ako, yung kawawa ako. Kawawa naman ako, hindi na ako makapag-gym. Ayun, just ko. First world problem ang tinatawag dyan. Kawawa naman ako, I don't get to party with my friends. No, fight this mentality. There are so many things that you can, should be grateful for. Overcome difficulties, learn from your mistakes, are sick less often, syempre. Because when the mind is healthy, the mental health is good, the body will follow. And can adapt, of course, to stress. Now, quick poll question again. Are Filipinos resilient? Ayan, sige. Alu, could you kindly? There we go. So, there are only three selections, so 15 seconds should do. What do you think, Alu? Are we resilient as a people? Definitely. Because you could observe that at times when you're hit by natural calamities, diba? Yes. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. So let's see the results. So yes. So the bigger percentage is yes, a little bit of no, and 27% for some time. Sige. Okay. Guys, so everybody who's listening, um, yes, Filipinos are resilient. And for those who are not Filipino, who are listening, just to give you a brief background, not only Filipinos, but most Southeast Asian countries or cultures are resilient. Why? These are the advantages of being in a third world. Okay? Because we're so used to trials. We're so used to hardships that resiliency is strong in our culture. When I used to do cultural training before, by the way, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you're not. Okay? But uh, studies say that most of the time, third world countries and cultures from third world countries are more resilient. Okay, but I'm, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that your culture is not. I'm just saying that we are more. They, India, like, like us, uh, Malaysia, all the Southeast Asian countries, most of the time are more resilient or third world countries. Now, just to share, uh, I remember that when I was uh, training, uh, cultural training for foreigners to understand Filipinos, one of the foreigners, uh, we, we were a mix of Filipinos, uh, Indians, Mal Malays, and then there was a Russian, German, and other Westerners and they ask a question that something of one guy asked and he said uh, um, sir I have a question and, and, and he said I saw something very peculiar on the news the, in your local news the other day I said sure please share it with us uh, because we've been having rains there are parts of your country that are flooded yes yes sir and, and, and I come from that area where it floods and while the reporter I'm sure was in a safe distance was reporting about the flooded area in the background were people wading in the water. So, naglalakad sa baha. And the moment they saw the video camera, they started smiling, shouting, and waving, and they were so happy to see the video camera. And I found that very odd, sabi ng foreigner. What, why does he have to be so happy? Is he not? It's so weird, sabi niya. Kasi, ano ba, na, nasa baha, tapos ang saya-saya. So, I explained to this person, well, that particular person, probably lives in this in that area and is used to the to the flood and has built a resiliency kung sabaga to it no sanay na siya sa baha sanay na siya sa hirap sa lumang maglakad sa baha so it's it's normal for him he's accepted that reality but it's not every day that he experiences a camera crew that will give him a few seconds of fame right so he focused on the positive of the situation and started waving in the camera Besides, sir, if that guy cries, the water will rise. Of course, the foreigner did not get my joke because that joke is specifically for Filipinos, no? the type of humor. Kasi pag umiyak, tataas yung tubig. Anyway, so there. As a culture, everyone, remember, um, Filipinos are resilient. No? Sanay tayo sa, sa ganyan and we can build our resilience even better. So remember, everyone, that we should never... Uh, break, we should be like bamboo. The bamboo that bends is stronger than the oak that resists, sabi ng Japanese proverb. Kung i-compare mo yung bamboo sa akasha, pag malakas ang bagyo, yung akasha ang malalaglag. Yung bamboo 
is bends. Hum, humble siya. Humble siya. You know, he threw humility. And because of that humility, um, we are able to adjust. We're able to build our resilience. So again, everybody, especially to those uh, who are listening, both at Facebook and also attending our Zoom uh, room, don't break. Instead, bend. And uh, uh, stay safe, everyone. So um, I'm done, Alu, with my presentation, and I'm ready for questions. All right. Thank you, Bobby, for that very inspiring webinar. You know, a lot of people are reacting positively to your talk. So let's uh, take a look at the questions here. I will just uh, start sharing my screen. Sure. Okay. Uh, could you please? There you go. There you go. Okay. So let's pull up some questions here. Mm -hmm. The first question with the most likes is, what may we consider the experiential effects of social injustices? For example, the need to walk for miles in order to attend school and work, the need for provincial teachers and students to go to higher places, such as mountains or hills to inherit stronger internet signals for online classes, or as a form of resilience, or are these an effect of walang magawa or choice kasi walang tumutulong? That is why it has been normalized and romanticized as a phase of Filipino resiliency that must be idolized. So that is a question from Sophia Rose Karamat. Okay, so thank you very much for that question. And to be very honest with you, um, again, going back to what I've uh, discussed, focus on the things that you can control and you can't control. So uh, in terms of giving a comment about the support that they're not getting, I can't comment on that because I'm not into politics and I'm just focusing on uh, our webinar here. But the good part about what these people are experiencing is yun nga, since they will not wait for that support and they will do and adjust and adapt to the challenges that they have. I'm not condoning the fact that there is no support, nor, nor am I uh, uh, recognizing na kulang sila sa support. I'm focusing on the fact that there are times, not only in our local setting, but also in other settings around the world, especially in areas that are also underdeveloped, wherein people do what they can with what they have. In fact, yung mga yan, mas matibay pa sila because they, they get to walk. And that's a, a very big thing, that type of exercise uh, is good for, 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 for the person. And one thing that I can speak out of in terms of experience, sometimes we have to go through these things to appreciate the simpler things more. Hindi ba? Like, I'll give you an example. Pag sanay ka maglakad all your life, tapos nakaipon kang bumili ng kotse, kahit second hand na karagin, but it works. Can you imagine how much you'll appreciate that more? So in terms of building resilience, uh, again, focus on the things that you can control and uh, you know, learn and be stronger from those experiences. So I hope I was able to answer that question. Okay, that's good advice. Uh, the second question that we have is from Ms. Segundina uh, Miklat. Uh, Sir Bobby, what can you say about the recent news about students who suffer from stress and depression who chooses to end their lives by suicide? Okay, so that's something that should not be taken lightly. So parents, mm -hmm. uh, if you're listening, please be very um, observant of your kids. Pag napansin mo na tahimik na yan, na walang kinakausap, it could be signs of depression. It could be matas yung, ano, yung uh, cortisol levels because of stress, kulang yung mga happy hormones. Uh, seek help right away. Di ba? For those students and for those who are listening right now, Again, if you, if you heard about the I have, I, I can, and I am formula, uh, there are so many things that you have to be grateful for. Don't be afraid to reach out. If you are having difficulty expressing your thoughts to your parents, uh, don't limit to them. I mean, when in time, when you're ready, go ahead. No, hindi ka naman pipilitin ng mga yan. But if you have other relatives na you look up to or some people that you, that you trust who will give you some advice, kausapin nyo. It's not good to keep these things inside. So tulungan lang talaga yan. No? Suicide is, is a reality and it's something very negative and it's very, something very tragic. And we can all help one another prevent these things. And uh, I, I remember a friend sharing with me recently uh, what he experienced with, uh, with his, uh, with his uh, child. Kasi yung anak niya, 
is clinical depression. Binabantayan niya talaga na husto. Because there, in, in his case, the, the, the child cannot produce happy hormones. So under medication talaga siya. And because of the pandemic, it's amplifying it. So talagang todo bantay sila uh, mag-asawa. It's something that we have to do talaga because it's, uh, you know, it, it's part of not only being a good parent but also as being a supportive uh, citizen of this world. Hindi ba? Na, to, not, to not let people get to that point. You can also look at social media, yung mga pinopost na mga tao, mga friends natin. Pag napansin mo na puro negative, you, know, you can reach out to this person and ask how they're doing because maybe that's their way of ready giving signals that they're going through something. Di ba? And if you yourself are having these thoughts, I highly recommend that you talk to a specialist. Di ba? Um, it's something serious. It's something that has to be addressed by the right type of people. So, di ba? Pwedeng family, and then pagka talagang ano, or, or both, na ba? both family and specialists. Pag specialists kasi, mas maganda sa kanila, they're more objective. Di ba? So they'll give better advice. So uh, to, to the person who asked that question, we really have to be very careful and very proactive in, in checking on the kids, especially those who like to go outdoors and all of a sudden they're restricted to the indoors we have to be creative as parents to look for activities for these children para they don't experience uh, yun nga, yung moments of despair so I, I, I hope I was able to answer that question Alu? Okay, thank you Bob so you have uh, maybe you can for a, a couple of minutes to answer this question from sure. Facebook and this is from Pireni Makatangay. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, can we say that being positive is the same as being resilient? It's the foundation of being resilient, of course. Um, the best way I can summarize and uh, explain it is this. So, pag nag-work out ka, hindi ba? The foundation is uh, the, the desire to lose the weight and to get healthy. And the building the resilience is the actual exercising and working out. So yung base ng resiliency starts with being positive. Yun yung, ano, yun yung fuel. Tapos, yun yung fallback. What does that mean? So positive ka, you build your resilience. Then you encounter a, uh, uh, a challenge. It may knock you down. But yun nga, dahil positive ka, you, you remember the seven C's of resiliency and you're able to build that resistance, you're able to stand up, to get up. Kasi if you look at people who work out, pag napagod sila, and if they're being instructed by their coach to push one more rep, if they don't want to push that rep, they won't. If they don't want to lift that weight, they won't. Hindi ba? So yung foundation nga ng residency is yung pagiging positive. Pero what helps being positive and being resilient is the powerful word that I told you about, which is choice. You have to choose to do so because if you don't, it, it won't happen for you. So that's my take on that, Alan. Right. I totally agree. Those are good uh, points. Okay. So, Bob, we have reached the end of our webinar. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. For <laughs> for attending. Thank you, Bob, for that very informative and very enlightening webinar. We will have our next webinar uh, series in October. Please watch out for announcements in our Facebook pages, Trend Micro Careers Philippines, and Click Right PH. The key takeaways for this session will also be posted there. Uh, so please like and follow these pages to stay updated. Also, as a friendly reminder, all materials and presentations are owned by Trend Micro Incorporated and are subject to copyright. So for those asking about the slides, or you can share them. To access the survey for this webinar, you could take a snapshot of this QR code. Remember to answer the survey after leaving the session to get your certificate of attendance. So thank you, everyone. You have a wonderful day ahead and a wonderful week. Bye, everyone. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Thank you for Stay joining safe. us. Bye. Bye.